Straighten out the wire by running your thumb and forefinger along the length. Bend the wire into a U shape. Not a V, there should be no crease at the bottom, but a U shape. We are going to begin our model by putting the first step. We're going to use a guanine and a cytosine. So that means we're going to put on a red and a blue bead. Which backbone molecule actually connects to the nitrogen base rungs or steps? It's the sugar deoxyribose which is represented by the yellow beads. So we're gonna put one yellow bead on each side of the wire now. So you will have a yellow, a blue, a red, and a yellow bead on the bottom of your wire. Next, we will add the phosphate, which is represented by the green. So we put one green on each side of the yellow beads. So you have green, yellow, red, blue, yellow, green. We're going to continue with this wire adding only the backbone molecules. So after you add the green, you're going to add a yellow on each side, and then a green on each side, and so on. Be careful when you're working with the wire that you hold the top on both sides because it's very easy to let the beads slide off of one end if you're holding only one side of the wire. If you need to pause here and stop for the day and you won't be able to finish the wire, what you'll need to do is very loosely wrap the ends of the wire around the key ring and then place it into the ziplock. Then you'll be able to unwrap it tomorrow and continue. When you're complete, you should have 24 green and yellow beads on each side of the red and blue bead. When we attach the key ring, we're going to need extra wire at the top. So we're going to use our fingers to measure two finger widths above the beads. Above that, we'll twist just like a bread tie and then attach that twisted wire to the key ring. But we need to have two finger widths of space available above the beads.
We're going to attach the silver wire for adding the rest of the steps. To do this, everyone should set your bead just like I have here on the video with the blue bead on the right side. We're going to count from the blue bead. So we're going to separate all the other beads away from the blue bead. And then we are going to count. Skip a yellow, skip a green, see the wire in between. We're going to take just the very end of the silver wire and wrap it around, so probably about the width of your thumb. And you wrap it all the way around the silver wire, wrap that end around the copper, When you're done wrapping, it's going to take up some space. We can push that together with our fingernails or with the two beads around it. That way it'll take up a little bit less space on the copper wire. This is the only time we're going to do any wrapping. We're now going to add a black and a white bead to the silver wire. This will be our second step of our model. Now we're going to look across to the red bead, the opposite side of what we're on. We're going to be weaving back and forth from now on, very important. So we look at the red bead and we count. Skip a yellow, skip a green, see the wire in between. Then we're going to take the silver wire and thread it through a yellow and through a green. So no more wrapping, just weaving in and out. So notice it's through the beads. Then we're going to pull the silver wire as tight as we can so we don't see any more silver wire. This will make it look more like a ladder. So the tighter you pull it, the better it's going to look. For the rest of your model, you can choose the order of the steps, but you must always have red and blue together or black and white. You will continue following the same pattern, adding your steps, so add your two beads, then you look across to where you left off on the last step, so in this case on the other side of the black and white step. You count, skip a yellow, skip a green, make sure you can see the wire in between, then you thread the silver wire through a yellow and through a green. There should always be a green and a yellow bead between all the steps. You should always be pulling your silver wire out of a green bead, otherwise you've probably gotten off somewhere. And if you get bends in the silver wire, use your thumb and forefinger to run across it to get any bends out. Because if you get a lot of kinks in the wire, it can start to catch and make it hard to use.
sometimes your bead model will start to look kind of stretched out. This is a simple fix. Make sure you've pulled the silver wire as tight as you can and just push down from the top. To finish your model, we'll push down all the beads from the top so it looks more like a ladder and everything's nice and tight. Notice you'll have a yellow and a green bead on the top on each side. Then we're going to twist the copper wire kind of like a bread tie to finish it off and hold all those beads in place. Once we're done twisting the copper wire, we'll take the silver wire and wrap it around the copper wire. This will finish it off and hold everything on our model. Tape your model to the paper, one piece of tape at the top with the ring and one piece at the bottom to hold it in place. You should not twist your model yet, it should lay flat. Copy the color code exactly as written. Begin by coloring the backbone. So we'll color all the sugars, which are circles, yellow, and all the phosphates, which are squares, green. We're going to color the rest of the paper using circles to represent the beads and they should go in the exact same order as your model. So my first bead here is a red, so I'll color a red circle. Then I have a blue to match it, so I'll draw the blue circle next to it. We'll do this for all of your beads so that your paper model should exactly match the bead model you created. For the white beads, simply draw an outline around it with the black marker.
Remember these colors represent the letters of the DNA code. So blue is C, T is black, red is G, and white is A. Transcription means making the RNA that matches the sense strand. So it's what pairs with the sense strand. So C pairs with G. So I would write G under the mRNA. T is going to pair with A. Now remember, you should be doing your own, not copying mine. Everyone's unique. G pairs with C. The difference is that A pairs with U. Everything else is the same, just like DNA. But there's no T in RNA. Instead, there has to be a U. The final step is translation. This is when the RNA code becomes a protein. Every three letters represents one amino acid. So we take our decoder wheel, start in the middle, and work our way outwards. So GAA gives me this GLU, but I need to flip it over to find out what that stands for, because we need to write the full word. So GLU stands for glutamic acid. So for my first three letters, my first codon, it stands for glutamic acid. You'll have four amino acids in your protein. It's possible you might get a stop, so just write stop in that case, but keep going. In the real protein it would stop, but in this case we're going to do all four. So if you get stop, you just write stop, and then keep going on to the next one anyway. So this string of amino acids would become a protein in the real cell.